Doing science research while you're still in high school is an Ivy League admissions hack. And if you don't want to pay $10,000 for some fake science research program, I want you guys to save this video because I'm going to show you step by step how you can get real science research while you're in high school and you're going to be able to do it completely for free. The first thing you're going to have to do is start learning a basic programming language like R or Python for data analysis. And the reason you have to do that is because most labs are not going to let high school students do any kind of work that involves touching or moving anything dangerous or anything involving chemicals. Most biology and chemistry labs will literally not let you touch a single thing until you're over the age of 18. But the one thing that you can do is data analysis. So a lot of researchers will literally have piles of data sitting around from experiments that were conducted by graduate students, and they have no time to analyze it. But if somebody came along who did know how to make all the charts and graphs and run the analysis on that data, you could actually turn that into a paper and they would be required to give you a credit for it when it actually goes for publication. Now, the easiest way to learn enough Python on to do that kind of data analysis is with a free course called CS50 on edX. It's actually Harvard's introduction to Python, and it's more than enough for you to work in any kind of science research lab. And if you can afford it, I always recommend splurging the extra 200 bucks to get the certificate at the end. That's always a great way to verify that you know what you say you know. Now that you have some skills that would make a professor actually want to work with you, I want you to start compiling a list of all the professors that you could work with. So to do this, I want you to Google every university within, let's say, a 50 mile radius of you. And I want you to start compiling a spreadsheet where you track all the names, emails, and recent publications of any of the professors that you might want to reach out to. Well, I want you to aim for at least 100 to 200 people on that list because when you reach out to them, you should expect about a sub 1% response rate. Next, I want you to start crafting personalized emails for every single professor on that list. Now, the personalization is key. You can't just write one form email for everyone on the list. They're going to very quickly see that it has nothing to do with you. You need to actually take the time to look up who the professor is and make sure that you're actually a good fit for their lab. In that email, I want you to also include that you've taken CS50, that you have the certificate, that you know enough data analysis that you could actually help them, and ask them especially to refer you to other labs. About half the students that I've worked with who do get science research, they don't get it from that first email. They actually get it because the professor who they emailed maybe can't work with them, but they refer them to one of their colleagues. So make sure you include that as well. And that's it. I've worked with thousands of students who have gotten science research this way, and I've yet to see a single student who faithfully followed all those steps that didn't end up in a lab and was able to get a great research project. So I want you guys to go ahead and get started today and keep in mind that most professors will make decisions about what high school students they'll bring on for the summer by about February or so of the preceding year. So if you're interested in doing research next summer, make sure that all those emails that I mentioned go out right around Christmas time. That'll give you enough time to communicate with the professor way before they decide about who's going to be in their lab next summer.